Today we come to the second chapter, which deals with the ascetic practices. They are given here because the, the practice of these uh, helps us to, to further scrape away the mental defilements. <clears throat> so first, uh, we need the purity of virtue or moral conduct, and in addition to that, we need to practice some some of these ascetic practices, so that uh, we can at least diminish the mental defilements. And the in this chapter, thirteen ascetic practices are treated and it is said in the book that these 13 practices were allowed by the Buddha <coughs> in Vinaya Pitaka and also in in, in Sota Pitaka uh, these practices are mentioned but these are not precepts we practice them not as precepts, but as some, some in addition to, to the precepts. And there are altogether 13 of them, and the list is given in, in, in the book on page 59. The refuse rag wearers practice, one, two, the triple rug wearers practice, three, the arms food eaters practice, four, the house to house seekers practice, five, the one sessioners practice, six, the bowl food eaters practice, seven, the let, later food refusers practice, eight, the forest dwellers practice, nine, the tree root dwellers practice, ten, the open air dwellers practice, eleven, the channel ground dwellers practice, twelve, the any bed users practice, and thirteen, the sitters practice. <coughs> and in Visodhimaga, the meaning of the, <coughs> the, the words uh, the meaning of the names are explained first, and then the the practice itself. And the meanings, the explanation of the names are mostly um, mostly with regard to Pali language. So the the translation may be a little awkward. <coughs> now the first one is called Refuse Wreck Wear Wearer's Practice. Now, uh, before the robes were allowed by Buddha uh, to be given by lay people, monks have to collect the robes uh, themselves. That means they, they have to go to places like a rubbish heap or mm. a charnel ground or whatever, and then pick up pieces of cloth um, thrown away by people. And they cut out uh, the, the parts that are mm. weak, and then they take the good ones and they put them together into a rope. So that is the way monks, uh, monks obtain ropes before uh, the um, Buddha allowed uh, robes to be given by lay people. And Buddha, actually Buddha did not refuse to allow um, robes for monks given by people, but uh, no occasion arose. So Buddha did not uh, lay down any rule. Then at one time, the, the, the great physician Jivaga, he got uh, two pieces of cloth, uh, very uh, good cloth. And so he went to the Buddha and <coughs> requested the Buddha, uh, offering these robes to the Buddha and then requested him to allow monks to accept robes given by lay people. So from that time on, monks uh, were free to accept robes given by lay people or to, to collect pieces of cloth uh, on the roads and and make them into uh, ropes. So the first one is 
the practice of the refuse rag wearer. And that means if a monk um, undertakes to practice this, this uh, ascetic practice, then he, he must not accept robes from lay people, but he must pick up um, material for robe, robe and then make his own robe. <coughs> And in the book on paragraph 15, there are 20, 23 uh, sources of ropes, or actually rope material, uh, and the cloth that are to be made into ropes. So the first one is one from eternal ground, and the second one one from a shop and so on. So they are described in, in Visodhi Maga. So these 23 are the robes um, allowed for monks as well as uh, for those who practice, who, who, who undertake these practices. <coughs> now, after explaining these 23 sources of robes, the, the other gave us some, some explanation about the practice. And so we go to paragraph 19. One given thus, we give it to the order of God by those who go out for arms cloth is not a refuse rag. Now, people, uh, people sometimes give robes to the community, to the order, not to an individual monk. So the order accepts these robes, and when there are enough robes to to be distributed, then. Uh, distribution takes place. <clears throat> so a robe which has been given to the Sangha and which is uh, caught by the monk who, who practices this uh, practice, for him th this kind of robe is not a refuse rag. So he must not accept or he must not use such robes. That is God as a share uh, from the Sangha. Suppose there are ten, ten monks living in a monastery and uh, there, there are ten robes. Then one of the monks will, uh, will distribute these robes to, to different monks. And uh, the, best, the best one goes to the, the, the eldest one, according to the seniority of uh, uh, the years spent as monk. <coughs> And then sometimes it seems that monks go out for arms cloth. That means go out to, to collect uh, cloth instead of arms. And the usual thing is we go out every, every morning for arms. We pick up our bowls and then uh, go into the city to, to receive arms. So here they, they go out for, not for arms but for robes. <coughs> So, a robe uh, got in that way is not a refuse rag. Then, in the 23 sources of robe, there is one, one which is uh, <coughs> mentioned as a, a robe of a monk, robe of a bhikkhu. That means a, a robe given by a monk to another monk who, practice, uh, who, who undertakes this practice. With regard to that, there, there, there is some, um, something to, to, to know. And in this passage, in about two sentences, Nyana Moli misunderstood the word, the Pali word here. So I, I will explain, uh, uh, not following his translation. Now, a monk may give a robe to a monk who is undertaking this practice. But, <clears throat> a, 
if the let us say non dutanga monk and he, he is not practicing dutanga dutanga means ascetic practice and one who practices i will call dutanga monk now a non dutanga monk <coughs> gives a robe to dutanga monk but when he gives robe to dutanga monks <coughs> if he gives according to the seniority of the dutanga monks then that robe is not a refused rag that robe is not not allowable for that monk or sometimes people offer robes uh, to those who <coughs> who reside at their uh, monastery uh, there are people who built a monastery or a, a, a building and then they say we will offer robes to the monks who live in our monastery so that kind of um, robe is also not a refused rag so if a non dutanga monk gives robe to dutanga monks he must give them not not according to seniority but just give them as their personal personal uh, gift that is what is meant here so in nyanamoli's translation he, he misunderstood one word and that makes also no sense here yeah. and in the case of one presented by biku one given after it has been got at the presentation of robes by householders at the end of the reigns that is uh, quite quite wrong there is a pali word wassa and it means reign or it means year the secondary meaning is year and also it means uh, year spent by a monk if somebody ask me how many wasa uh, i i have then i will say uh, i have 41 wasa that means i have been a monk for 41 years and when the robes were distributed distributed they were distributed according to the seniority suppose there are 100 monks but there are only 50 robes then 50 robes are distributed to the the most senior 50 monks and then they stop there and when they when they get uh, ropes later then they will distribute from the 51 and so on <coughs> so <coughs> this is how the the the, the uh, ropes given to monks are uh, given to the order or dis uh, are distributed to the monks so when they distribute they, they must distribute according to seniority so uh, the pali what wasa here means uh, a year spent as a monk and not at the rain, at the end of rainy season it, it's it's uh, uh, interesting but it's funny because, because the word is wasaga v a s s a g g a now v a s s a vasa can mean uh, rains or year or a year spent as a monk and agga can mean the end but but it is not usual that the, it, it it means end but agga means the edge so he took this to mean the edge of rains that means the end of rains but it is quite quite wrong here uh, agga does not mean the edge but agga is something like a, a, a portion or proportion proportion as the wasa and wasa here means not rainy season but uh, the year spent as a monk so when a non dutanga monk gives robe to dutanga monk he must give not according to the seniority of the dutanga monks but just just give them away so that is the meaning here <coughs> that is uh, the robe given by a monk to a dutanga monk now if that monk a, a non dutanga monk got the robe when the the lay people 
put the robe at his feet, not, not to, into his hands, but they put the robe at the feet of the monk and the monk picks up. If it is that way and the non-Dutanga uh, monk gives into the hand of the Dutanga monk, then it is uh, called um, pure in one way. Because uh, when the rope is put at the foot of, uh, foot of a monk, it is, it is called uh, pure. But when it is given to the hand of a monk, it is not called pure. So it is pure in one way. Then, if lay people offer a rope to the monks, uh, into the hands of a monk, and that monk put the rope at the foot of a Dutanga monk, it also is uh, pure in one way only. But if uh, the, the lay people put the rope at the feet of the monk, and that monk uh, gives that rope to the non, uh, that monk gives to the Dutanga monk by, by putting the rope at the, uh, at the feet of the Dutanga monk, then it is called uh, pure in both ways. <coughs> then uh, the rope which is put into to the hand of a non-Dutanga monk and then put into the hand of a Dutanga monk, that is called uh, not, not so good rope. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, it is said in the hand too, it's not a strict man's robe. <laughs> and the, the practitioner of this, the, this practice, this Dutanga, are divided into three. The, the best one, the medium one, and the least one. So there are three grades here given. So the first grade, I mean the highest grade, one who takes it only from a channel ground is strict. That is, he is the best one. He, he must take the, the rope from a channel ground only. It is impossible nowadays. Even in our country, it is impossible. So in, the, in the olden days, people uh, wrap the body with a cloth and then uh, leave it at the, at the cemetery. It is, it is not buried or it is not, uh, not cremated. So monks can pick up uh, such cloth from uh, charnel grounds. <clears throat> so nowadays there can be no first class Dutanga uh, monk in, in, in this respect. So the second one takes one left, uh, one left by someone thinking one gone forth will take it is medium. That means uh, somebody leaves the rope somewhere so that uh, some monks can see. So when he sees it, he can pick it up. So the, if, if a Dudanga monk uh, takes that rope, then he is said to be of medium, medium grade. And the mild one, takes the robe uh, put at his, uh, at his feet. So there are three, uh, in every practice, uh, every one of the 13 practices, there are three grades of the practitioners. And then the, <coughs> the benefits of the, the practice are given. Uh, he actually practices in conformity with the dependence now, the dependence means that uh, there are four kinds of dependence for monks, clothing, food, dwelling place, and medicine. They are called dependence. And when a, a monk depends on, on, on the uh, cloth got from uh, China ground and so on, then he is said to be practicing in conformity with the, with the teaching of this dependence. And he's also established in the first of the noble one's heritages. Now, 
and, and the reference is given here, A227. There are four noble ones heritages, and that is uh, content with whatever robes one gets, content with whatever food one, uh, that means a monk, whatever uh, food one gets, content with whatever dwelling place one gets. And then, Mm, practicing meditation. So these are called four, four heritages of the noble ones. So here, uh, the, the commentator said, the, he is established in the first of the noble ones heritages, that is, content with whatever uh, robes he gets. So this is the first. Then the second one, the second one is what? Triple robe wearer's practice. <clears throat> now, there are three robes allowed uh, for monks, and if a monk uses only three robes, then he is said to, uh, to, to undertake uh, this ascetic practice. Let me show you the three robes. I need a demonstrator. This is a lower, a lower garment. So this is one. And this is the upper robe. It's, it's twice the size of that. These are the usual two robes we use every day. And there is another one called a Sangati in Pali. And it has two, what do we call, two layers. We call it double robe. And it has more, more sections than the other robe. That has only five sections, or five, we call them rooms, five rooms. But it may, this may have about 25. Who makes these robes? Unbelievable. Now yeah, they commercially <laughs> make them. And this is actually you uh, use as a blanket. It is a double robe, and so in, in winter uh, we use this as blanket. So these three robes are <coughs> allowed by the Buddha. And when he wanted to allow robes, he tried it himself, the Buddha. Uh, it is said in our books that during the coldest day in, in the year, that is maybe in December, he put on only one robe during the, during the night, and he, tra he tried it. And he could stay with one robe uh, for, for the first watch of the night. Then he, he felt cold, so he took another robe. And he was able to, to keep himself warm enough with that robe until the second watch of the night. And then he take another robe. And then it, it, it could maintain him until the third watch. So when the, uh, at the end of the third watch, he felt cold again. So he took another robe. And so there were four robes. And these four robes he, he uh, allowed to, to the monks. But these four be, be, became three because uh, two are made into one. And so uh, we have now three robes. So a monk who undertakes to wear only three robes, no, 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 no more robes, no, nothing to, to change, is called a, a, a monk who practices this kind of uh, ascetic practice or dudanga. I have a question for that monk. Do you think that might be limited for that particular area that, you know, uh, Buddha was born and so on. So if uh, someone in Alaska or someplace would like to become a monk and, uh, and 
want to you know, follow strictly, it might be uh, difficult because uh, Buddha was not in the last time. That's right. That yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm I'm wearing this shirt here. <laughs> I, I, I will never use this in uh, in Burma. So uh, we have to we have to adapt uh, to the climate of the place where we live in. But Buddha lived in India, and India was not so cool as as, as America or as Alaska. So we have to we have to. Uh, modify some some of his uh, sayings <coughs> so the maybe the the minimum uh, minimum amount of clothing see you you, you can survive uh, with the least of the clothes and that that should be the minimum here some people have say 10 or 12 sets of clothes maybe <coughs> And they are, they are actually not necessary. So what, what is uh, a bare necessity for you? Maybe say, one dress, one set of dress, so something like that. <coughs> now, with regard to the practice itself, now, monks have to dye, uh, dye the robes themselves in, in, in the old, olden days. So, uh, at the time of dyeing, first dye either the inner cloth or upper garment. Inner cloth means the smallest one, or the upper garment first. And having dyed it, he should wear uh, that, round, uh, that round the waist and dye the other. So, when, you, when he dyes the, the robe, he dyes he, he put on one and then he dyes the other one. And then after dying, uh, uh, after he had finished dying, then he put on the other robe and then dyed the other one and so on. So uh, the two robes, not, not this, the other two robes can be, can be worn as an upper robe or uh, as a lower garment uh, at that time, at that moment. But this, this uh, he, he should never uh, put on like like a lower garment. So this is mentioned here. Then he can put that on over the shoulder and tie the cloak cloak of patches. Or this, and the cloak of patches means this robe, sangati. There are many patches here, but he is not allowed to wear the cloak of patches round the waist. So it should not be used as a, a lower garment, even for uh, even temporarily. <coughs> But this is the duty when an abode inside the village. That means inside the village or close to a village. But it is allowable for him in the forest to wash and die two together. And he, he may have nothing to put on. But since he is in the forest, he could do that. However, he should sit in a place near to the rope so that if he sees <laughs> anyone, he can pull a yellow cloth over himself. <laughs> I think it is. Uh, it is. It is easy to get this color, and it may be uh, considered as appropriate for for those who have uh, who have uh, left behind their home or uh, what about home lives and then go into homeless life. And the color actually is something between yellow and yellow and brown not 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 a specific color is is mentioned but it must not be red it must not be a bright yellow it must not be blue something like that so it comes to something somewhere between uh, yellow and brown and we get the dye from from the um, bark of a certain tree, or the inner core of the jackfruit tree. I have asked people here whether they know jackfruit tree, and they said no. Jack. Jackfruit. It is like uh, like some uh, similar to uh, breadfruit tree. 
You, you don't know breadfruit either? It's this big, isn't it? The tree, the, you mean the trunk? The fruit. Yeah, the fruit also big. It has, uh, it, it's uh, outer, what do you call it? Skin is, is, has uh, something like thorns, not, not sharp thorns, but something like thorns. It is a tropical fruit. And the, the inner core of that tree is dark brown color. So we take that inner core and then chop, chop it down to small pieces and then boil. So we get dye. So when it is dyed with that, uh, with that dye, it comes to um, resemble something like this color. <coughs> Now, a, a monk who practices, who undertakes this practice, can have a fourth uh, robe or fourth piece of cloth, and that is mentioned here. <coughs> the shoulder, it is called shoulder cloth. That is just a piece of cloth. One, one span, one span wide, and three, about three cubits long, so a piece of cloth to, to wrap around his body. That is to keep himself warm and also to keep, uh, to, to, to soak sweat so that it, uh, it doesn't swell the, <coughs> the outer robe. So that is the only uh, fourth piece of cloth allowed for him. Now the next one is Arms food eaters practice. That means uh, if a monk undertakes this practice, he must go for arms every day. He cannot accept uh, food from uh, food, or uh, he, he must not accept invitations. And in this respect, the, uh, 14 kinds of uh, food are mentioned. <coughs> On page 60, 67. Now, this food eater should not accept the following 14 kinds of meal. A meal offered to the order, a meal offered to specified bhikkhus. That means uh, there is one monk who assigns um, monks to accept food. So, he, he, he may assign one monk to take food to take uh, food at a certain man's house. So that, that, that kind of food is called the specified, uh, offer to specified monks. And then invitation, a meal given by ticket, by, that means by lot or by ticket, and one each half moon day, that means once in a, once in, in a fortnight. Some people uh, offer uh, food once in a fortnight. One each uposatha day, that means the same thing. But uposatha day means full moon day or new moon day. One each first of the half moon, that means one day after full moon and new moon. A meal given for visitors when you're visiting monks, a meal for traveling monks, a meal for sick monks, a meal for those who are nursing sick monks. A meal supplied to a particular residence, a particular vihara, and a meal given in a principal house, that means the first house in the village, and a meal given in turn, that is by turn, uh, people uh, give me, uh, meals or food. So these are the 14 kinds of food which a Dudanga monk must not accept. So he, he, he must go out for arms and he must accept only those given by lay people at, at each house or at the houses he, 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 wanted to, he wants to go. <coughs> and there are also three, three grades. One who is strict takes arms brought forth from before and from behind. Do you understand that?
from before and from behind means suppose a monk is standing in front of this house if he is standing in front of his, this house and if a person from the the house behind um, brings food that means uh, a food from behind and fruit from front means from the from the next house <coughs> So one who is strict takes arms brought forth from before and from behind and he gives the bowl to those who take it while he stands outside the door. That means at, at, the, at, the, at the door he is standing. Then people come out and please give your bowl. We want to fill your bowl with food and offer to you something like that. Then he will give his bowl. That is allowed for him. But he does not take arms by sitting and waiting for it to be brought later that day. <laughs> the medium one takes as well uh, by sitting and waiting for it to be brought later that day. But not, but he does not consent to its being brought next day. So he does not, he does not accept or consent to 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 be waiting the next day. The mild one consents to arms being brought on the next day and on the day after. Both these last miss the joy of an independent life. You know, sometimes I, I, I going to do what I want to do because I have accepted an invitation and I have to, to go to the invitation. So something like that is meant here. Both these last the two, two monks miss the joy of an independent life. There is perhaps a preaching on the noble one's ages in some village. The strict one says to the others, let us go friends and listen to the Dharma. One of them says, I have been made to sit and wait by a man, <laughs> Venerable Sir, and the other, I have consented to receive arms tomorrow, Venerable Sir. So they are both losers. They, they didn't get the opportunity to, to go to the Dhamma talk. The other wanders for arms in the morning and then he goes and savors the taste of the Dhamma. <laughs> Next one, or oh, let me see. In the benefits, oh, let's read the benefits. Mm, he actually practices in conformity with the dependence because of the words, the going forth by depending on the eating of lambs of arms. So that, that's all right. He established in the second of the noble one's heritages. His existence is independent of others. It is a requisite recommended by the blessed one thus. Valueless easy to get blameless. Idleness is eliminated. Livelihood is purified. The practice of the minor training rules of the Padimaka is fulfilled because uh, these minor training rules said that uh, you must go for arms and when you go for arms uh, you, you must be uh, mindful of something like that. He is not maintained by another so he, de he does not depend on another. He helps others. Pride is abandoned. abandoned. Craving for taste is checked. <laughs> the training precepts about eating as a group, substituting one meal, invitation for another, and good behavior. Now, here also he, he, he misunderstood one word. This, this sentence refers to three, three precepts or three rules for monks. One rule said that um, if if a group is invited, then they must not go in a group and accept the food. They must go by one by one, but not as a group. So a group here means four monks or more. And substituting one meal invitation for another means going to or accepting the later invitation. Uh, suppose somebody uh, came to me and invited, invited uh, to, to take food. Then another man came and if I accepted the second man's invitation and actually uh, accept the food of the second man, then I break this rule. So this is what is meant here. Substituting here means just uh, not, not accepting or taking the food of the first, first man, but taking the food of the second man. So that is why we have to be careful 
about the invitations. Uh, it is first, first come, uh, first serve basis. <laughs> we, we, we cannot, or uh, we are not to skip one invitation in favor of another or in favor of the leader. And then good behavior is not good behavior. <laughs> He, he misunderstood the word here, that the word here is charita. Now there is another rule uh, that forbid monks to visit houses either before or after taking meal at a house. Suppose I am invited to take meal at a house. Before taking meal at, at that house, I must not visit another house. And after taking meal at a house, I must not visit another house. If I want to visit, then I must inform another monk. As I said, Venerable Sir, I want to, I'm going to visit this house, that, that, that house. So if he uh, informs another monk who is uh, close to him, then it is all right. If there, if there are no monks or if he does not inform uh, the, another monk and visits a house either before or after taking meal in that house, at that house, then he breaks that, that rule. So that rule is called in Pali, charita. Charita can mean good behavior and it can also mean wandering, going, going, going about. So here at the second <coughs> meaning, so visiting. So uh, three rules I want to refer to here accepting food as a group and then accepting the later invitation and visiting houses before and after taking meal at the at the appointed house <coughs> if if you go for arms every day you don't have to worry about these rules you will not break any of these rules because you 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 do not eat you do not uh, accept an invitation but you go out for arms so there can be uh, no, no breach of these rules if you practice, if you undertake the, the practice of going out for arms every day. <clears throat> the next one is house to house seeker. That means if a monk undertakes this practice, then he must not skip a house. Suppose he, he, he walks through one, one, one street, and if there are ten houses, he must stop at ten houses at each house. He must not skip this house and go to the next house. So that is what, uh, what is meant by um, house-to-house seeker. <clears throat> so in order f for him to be convenient, uh, the, the commentator gave advice here. First, he must look whether uh, the, the road is clear, then if it is not clear, he must not take that road, but take another, uh, take another road. And if he does not get food at a certain house or at some houses, uh, say every day, then he can, he can regard those houses as not houses. So he, he, he can skip those houses because every day they, 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 they do not give him food. So the, he, in, in that case he can skip it. <coughs> then in the benefits as paragraph 33 about third or fourth line, he avoids the dangers in being supported by a family, and that is not correct here. He always makes this mistake. He avoids the dangers in frequenting families. A, a monk who frequents families is is uh, considered a bad monk and not good behaving monk. But 
if he goes for alms, then he doesn't have to, to visit them, and so he avoids the danger of uh, being intimate with, uh, with families or with lay people. The next one is one sashana, that means eating at one sitting only. When the one sashana sits down in the sitting hall, instead of sitting on an elder seat, he should notice which seat is likely to fall to him and sit down on that. Now, uh, in, in a monastery where many monks live, and there is a, a dining hall, <coughs> and monks sit according to seniority. So he must, he, must, uh, he must go a little earlier and, and then try to find a place where he would not be, not to call. Uh, he, he doesn't have to give a seat to a senior monk because uh, the uh, monks are to sit according to seniority.